October Red Boxing here with huge boxing. Seems to be like the manager of the year. And another one of his fighters, Cyrus, is it Pattinson? Welcome. Don't forget the name, Cyrus Pattinson, future world champion, next James Bond. We've had this conversation with a debutant of yours last week and things seem to be coming through with you. We're going to have to keep an eye on you. I'm going to say that. Follow Huge Boxing because he seems to have an eye for talent. But enough about you. Cyrus, introduce yourself to us. Let us know a little bit about yourself and what we can expect from you on the Saturday night. Uh, I'm always in good and often a good fight, really, to be honest with you. My, uh, my last fight in Barcelona was uh, quite... <laughs> Dramatic, wasn't it? Hold on a minute. We've got we've got a gate crasher here. Uh, Darren, no, no. You need to get in because you've 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 got the. F I shouldn't be stood next to Cyrus. But he's got to make weight tomorrow, and I've got biscuits. That's not cool. I can you? Can put them off. I was trying to put them off of them, and I said it didn't work. Both professionals, unlike myself. Hoddly, I haven't got. You see, with a small channel like mine, I haven't got the wide-angle lens. So you two, you all three of you, have got to huddle in nicely. So you were standing in at the back, munching your biscuits, winding up the poor interviewee. Oh, what I jumped into it? What was the question? He was just introducing himself. Oh, well, right. Cyrus was actually being very humble about himself. He was like, you know, I'm kind of just like, you know, new on the scene. I'm in good fights. Listen, you're talking to Newcastle's version of Arturo Gatti, the future Newcastle or Turo yeah. Gay. He's in good fights, he loves a war. Darren Barker's watched him first hand and he'll give you the spiel on well, who will win. Right, I, I will hand over, but I'll take the, the mic and I'll talk because it's hard for Charlie because, well, it's not hard for Charlie, but he's his manager. Where I'm a former world champion, I will give my breakdown to Cyrus, who I, uh, you sent me a message, didn't you? An Instagram message saying thank you very much for all the words I said yesterday. And to be honest, there's nothing negative I can say about Cyrus. I'll start from him as a person. He's a top lad and people are going to buy into him straight away because he's a lovely, humble man. But as far as boxing talent is concerned, he's got everything. You know, there's the hand speed, the foot movement, they're just the ring IQ, that amateur pedigree that he's got holds fighters in such good stead. And I said it yesterday where he was pipped to the Olympics and it, it didn't go his own way. Then the, the, the time he had to wait for the, his debut, all of that stuff you can't buy it, and that's mental toughness. So if you couple his talent with his mental toughness, not to give you a big idea, like the the again I word it the best way I can. What a time to be Cyrus Patterson. Like do you know what I mean? Imagine be, imagine turning pro, having like a handful of fights, a couple of fights like Cyrus, and having your whole career in front of you. It, yeah, I mean that's the best compliment I could give. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> what an introduction. And from an ex-fighter and somebody who clearly knows boxing because they've been in the ring, you can't get better than that. And one more thing. The last fight in Barcelona, I think that would do you the world of good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a tough guy. The, I will say the venue was about 100 degrees. It was so hot in there. And al already you want, you want to be having these learning... I've got my biscuits. You want to be having your learning fights, you know, early on. You want to be having these experiences where it doesn't always go your own way because, you know, it does hold you, again, in good stead uh, moving forward. So, yeah, what a time to be Cyrus Patton. What a time to be all of these fighters. You know, go back to last week, Joe, uh, Joe and Peter McGraw. Callum French, all of these tremendous fighters with so much talent, with the opportunities they've got, so many different uh, you know, promoters and media channels and outlets for them to flourish and to show off their skills. It's just a great time to be a young, talented boxer. Well then I'll ask you a question. Uh, mate, I'm telling you, you, you are wearing the wrong shoes today. I want you at the centre, centre table, selling this fight. But what I will say then, based on the lockdown, and opportunities not being had, don't you think then it's done our fighters a lot of favours? Because a few of them that should have probably gone further in the Olympics have then been pulled out into the pro game. We've seen that happen with a couple of them. So your experience then, and to the manager, do you think this is a benefit for boxing in general, the pro game of boxing? I, I don't know if you can say benefit, I'm not sure. Because what every fighter wants is momentum. They want to be fighting, they want to be busy. Uh, but one thing I will say, uh, you have to give huge 
credit to promoters, uh, the fans most importantly, because boxing stayed tough, it stayed there, it stayed present, and and you could say arguably riding the, cr the crest of a, of, a, of a wave, that it's probably at its peak right now. And look, with boxing, there's stars come and go, and boxing always goes up and down. I remember with Muhammad Ali, well, I don't personally, but hearing fans of Muhammad Ali said the heavyweight division, though it was the, the, the flag, flag bearer, the torch bearer, if you like, was Larry Holmes, great fighter. It was on a bit of a downer because Ali had uh, retired. Same with Tyson, so it goes up and down, up and down. COVID obviously was a big dip. But boxing's gone straight back up there, and at, 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 at you know all-time high, I'd say. So it's great. Um, we've sort of, yeah, rode that storm, and we're we're back fine. Anyway, I better get in position now. I've come over, and I've just taken over this interview, haven't I? Anyway, you're always welcome. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for that. But back over to you, then, Cyrus. You've got a, a more or less a standing ovation there. But you tell me, tell us, tell the viewers a bit about yourself. I mean, I was on the JB setup for six years, so uh, obviously the experience that you that you gain from there is invaluable, really, to bring into the the adaptability that you you learn and you you have uh, when you come into the pro fights. So when you get in these longer training camps, when you get to actually work for an individual style, it works in your favour. Uh, and then I shortly left. JB not long ago made my debut in Newcastle which was which was amazing obviously it's making it in my hometown but there was a limited crowd so there was only a thousand people in capacity so there was far more people that wanted to come that couldn't uh, Barcelona again uh, where there was so many people could go and especially being abroad so I'm just enjoying a box at this event where it's full capacity and there's a lot more people coming to support us I will ask, because you're quite young, um, you've, you're going into fight three now, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that people look at your style and, you know, you've almost been described as Gatti, someone that wants to go into war, but we know that with amateur boxers, there's more to their arsenal. Do you worry sometimes about getting labelled as a certain type of fighter and then you want to go those extra rounds or you want to be in with someone that style matches yours so you, you can also show your boxing ability, not that you can just go in and trade? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's up to whoever they want to label me, whatever they want. At the end of the day, I know what I'm capable of. I can show in fights that I, I can't have a war, I can't dig deep, I can't go through the trenches, I can't take someone out, I can't go on the back foot. So I'm sure that over the next coming fights, I'm, everyone will see different sides of it. So. And over to the manager then, what made you choose him? Fair enough, I know he's got this you know, amateur background, um, the GB thing behind him as well. But what made him stand out to you? Because as a manager, and I would mean this is no disrespect, you have to look at it as a, a, a fighter, as an investment. So why Cyrus? Well, I've known Cyrus for a long time, probably five or six years actually. Watched him go through his development as a Team GB. Watched him go through his ups and downs. He won, won many tournaments, fell short to go to the Olympics. But I always said that he had the style to be a great pro. And I always said to him, when the time's right, give me a knock on the door and we'll get you a deal. Because this man here has got the potential to be the face of the North East. And I think the North East is a great city full of great fans. And they're crying out for a new face. And it wouldn't surprise me in years to come if he's fighting in big stadiums. I mean, we, he had his professional debut there. It was a bit limited on crowd. There was a 1,000 people in there. But 1,000 Geordies is like listening to a, uh, a stadium of 10,000 anywhere else. So this man, when it comes to fighting for British titles, stuff like that, he's going to be selling out stadiums. <laughs> that is really positive. And it's nice to see your manager getting behind you like that because that's what you want. When you decided to knock on the door, when you decided to say, you know what? it's time for a change what was that switch in your head that said okay all right I've got to do this pro thing now yeah to be honest like, I mean after I fell short at the 2016 Olympics uh, I knew I was in second position to go to Tokyo but I think it was from my own mind that I wanted to persevere and see it through so I had no what ifs and to be honest there was no negative side other than getting older being with GB I was learning all the time I was developing, uh, I was being looked after, 
Uh, so I don't think it done any harm. But once I knew that I wasn't going to the Tokyo Olympics, I think that was when we started putting things. In fact, I'd say it was probably even before, probably 2018, we started putting things in motion, setting things up, uh, and we knew that. So when we're going to hit the ground running, really. I want to add. I absolutely love the fighters who don't make it because even though it's their long, you know, it's a long career goal and a dream to go to the Olympics, but it's fighters like Cyrus Patterson that come through in the pro ranks and you make the big fights happen. Yeah. I mean, a huge fight with Cyrus Patterson is Josh Kelly. Yeah. I think, you know, that would be a great Northeast fight, two world away. It's both good looking, both can talk. Josh Kelly obviously went to the Olympics, you didn't. But listen, when you transition into the, to the pro ranks, and you will because you've got a great coach, that fight there is going to be a big, big fight. And I think we need, we need people like Josh Kelly who went to the Olympics, and we need people like Cyrus Patterson who didn't. And other people like Lawrence O'Coley obviously went to the Olympics. And then you've got people like Chamberlain who didn't. They made a massive fight. Um, Anthony Fowler and Scott Fitzgerald, they made a massive fight. You know, these sort of fighters you need in the pro ranks today because they're the ones coming through. They're the ones that are selling out the stadiums. So, you know, keep an eye on this kid. He's going to be big news. And we're going to move to where? Uh, Saturday then? Your opponent. Have you made a plan to beat him? I want to know a little bit about what goes on in your head when you get in the ring, before you get in the ring, that preparation. What type of fighter are you? I know he's a, he's a very durable and uh, experienced fighter. He's, uh, he's had probably 10 times the amount of fights that I have, if not more. He's been in with some of the higher end of the British scene, fighters that have boxed for a European title, British titles. So we know that the kind of opposition that he's been in. But I'm going in on Saturday and I don't want to just win. I want to make a statement. I want to do the things that other welterweights haven't been able to do. So I'm going to make a statement on Saturday night. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you out there. I'm looking forward to seeing your style and like a variation in your style as well. It's good to see a boxer have a variation. We love wars, we love knockouts, but I'm one of these fight fans that likes to watch a really good boxing match. So hopefully we'll get to see that with this opponent on Saturday. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if he wants to bring the heat to me, then that'll suit me to the ground. But if he wants to go running, which I expect it will do eventually. Uh, I know I'm, I'm expecting to cut the ring down and start chipping away and hurting them. And I know we don't like to say looking over opponents, I get all of that. We're coming to the end of 2021. Things are changing dynamically outside of boxing, etc., etc. But what can we expect from yourselves? I mean, what's the plan? What is the plan for Cyrus for 2022? Over to the manager. I think the most important thing is to stay active. Um, he's been pretty active. He's had three fights this year since he signed in the summer with Matram. Um, I think he's probably got another three fights to go until you know, we start looking at probably challenging for some sort of title. But I think towards the end of 22, we've got to start working towards the British titles. And I think this man's more than capable of winning that. I think that should be at least the minimum he should be looking to do. Um, but I think... It's important to win a British title, take a British title back to the city of Newcastle, get those fans back, get the crowds excited, and then we can move onwards from there and make the big fights. And your thoughts on that, the trust that you've got in your manager, your coaches, your team, would you concur with what your manager's just said? No, 100% concur. Like I'm behind anything that my manager and my trainer think that I'm capable of or direction they want to put me in. I'm just taking one fight at a time and whoever man, whatever man they put in front of me, I take care of. And that's the way I take care of it. Awesome. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm going to leave you because I know there's going to be a million and one people waiting to see you. I'd like to say, I like the way that you've uh, turned up today in the suit. Very dapper. There's one thing that us ladies do like to see, and that's a boxer in a suit. So well done, 10 out of 10 from me. October Red Boxing, until the next time. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.